honestly, uh, Jennifer, this is a real privilege. It is, it is wonderful to chat with you. Uh, Into the Weeds is a fantastic film. Um, just oh, I'm so glad you felt it. I, I really did. It, it is an incredible story. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we love about hot docs is that, you know, these aren't, these aren't fictional stories. These aren't stories that are meant to feel, you, you don't know how these things end when you begin them. Um, but I was wondering for you, you know, just before we talk about the film, what is it that fascinates you so much about documentary filmmaking? You've, you've been at this for, for some time. You know, I've, I'm, a, I'm actually sort of going through a bit of a three quarter life crisis of thinking, should I, like I've made 10 films now, that's a lot. Maybe I should stop or do something different, but there's something about the form of documentary that fascinates me as a way of asking a question and exploring a question. And I feel like I'm so privileged in the sense that every time we make a film, I, it's like I'm doing like a mini degree on that film. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm learning so, on all the subjects. I learned so much and, and it, that's incredible. But also, I'm also somebody who, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a modernist, but I do believe that form follows function, even though that's not a, a fashionable thing to think anymore. <laughs> but, and I think it, it, it sort of is in the way form follows content and documentary. And for me, I feel like when these, these stories somehow come my way and I just get like, I'm in, right? I'm, I'm down the rabbit hole and I'm in. And I realized that they all, have to be told in their own way. Like if, if it was me sort of imposing my style on, on, on the subjects, that, that would be arrogant and also would, would diminish um, the, the story. And so this, I mean, if you compare this to Anthropocene, for example, it's, they're, they're, they're so different because Anthropocene is meditative and experiential and it's very much about, um, you know, allowing us to reflect on our own implication. This is, this is much more about trying to convey a very complex set of, you know, of, of, of evidence, really, scientific evidence, um, a history of evidence, a history of malfeasance, and convey it in a way that ordinary people can understand and also kind of go, wow, like, uh, I didn't know that glyphosate was used everywhere on everything in the world, number one. And I didn't know the extent to which there is a kind of business as usual in these transnational corporations for um, protecting their, what they call their FTO, their freedom to operate at all costs. And uh, wow, like, I, you know, so I love documentary. I love it as a form of inquiry. I have no desire to do, you know, a different kind of film or make dramatic films or do something different. I just don't feel that, but um, it's still there. The, the passion is still there for sure. Well, what's amazing is this is a dramatic film. <laughs> you know, you say, well, I, yeah. I, understand, I understand what you mean. Absolutely. But this film is, is incredibly dramatic from start to finish. Um, and, and I mean, for you, now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sure when you got involved, when you get involved in a story like this, but I mean, do, does following through with these journeys, does it change you? How does it affect you personally? Oh, it complete, it, it, it's complete transformation every time. Like I, I, you know, in this case, so really what happened was when we were at Sundance with Anthropocene in early 2019 and we were talking to some people there who were kind of involved in these um, the beginning of these trials it had been just while Lee's case was being worked out and I immediately thought oh my goodness like um, I, I'm assuming that somebody is recording all of this and and they weren't and then Nick looked at me like I was crazy because it was after you know, five years of Anthropocene, and that was intense, man. Like that was a lot. And then it was like, we're we're we've got to do this. Like I just had this feeling of, this is a moment. And I know it's a cliche to say David versus Goliath, but this is a company that has a history of um, 
it has a history of harm, I would say, and and also um, an attempt to distance themselves from that harm or or not take responsibility for it or pivot. And um, I I just really thought this we had to do it, and it not it you know I mean trust me the 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 intense meticulous legal work that we have done um, in every claim in the film is a claim that was made in court that was backed up by evidence. There's nothing that is not backed up. And that is very much for uh, knowing that we're up against this massive corporation. But just think about those plaintiffs, think about Lee, like that, they, that, that he had the bravery to do that. Um, so that's incredibly humbling. And being with these people who are injured, ordinary people, um, it, it, it's enraging when you think that the, the paths to justice are, are rocky and um, they're not perfect. Like mass torts is not a perfect way to achieve justice. And um, why, why, why is that, you know, anyway? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Lee and I mean, he seems like a, a remarkable guy. Is it a challenge? Like for him, he's very open like wonderfully so, but there's some moments there where he's showing his scars and his wounds. Like, is it a challenge to gain a trust of someone like Lee, like to tell his story? Is he, is he ready from the beginning to say, we're gonna do this together? Well, no, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's not a, he's, he's a real everyman, but he's also, I mean, he's a hero now, but he, He's not an outgoing guy. So mm. even his sort of determination to go through with all of this was about what is right and wrong and also about protecting other people. Like every single plaintiff we talked to said, I don't care about money. I want them to put a warning on the bottle that so people can decide themselves whether to expose themselves to this chemical. And the lengths to which the company went to avoid that for years came out in the, on, in the Monsanto papers, which were you know, released during discovery. And now the public knows that there was a long history of obfuscation, intimidation, um, ghostwriting, malfeasance really corporate malfeasance that is shocking i mean maybe not that shocking really but all of that came out because of this trial and i think that lee talking to us it took him a little while but then he kind of recognized that we were in it for the right reasons and i have to say like there's a real line with subjects and i've had moments where it's time to turn the camera off right like this is not a moment to to be shared he wanted us to film him doing that routine because he has to do that every day, right? That when he gets up in the morning, that's what his bed looks like. That's what he has to do just to go outside, right? And he wanted to show us that. And it became really important for us to, you know, follow his wishes in that way. And I'm just so glad, and all the other people too, who we, we spoke to had the same sentiment. Like we, we're, we're doing this because we want people to know. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one of the things uh, that is brought up in the film is the Mont Montesanto documents when they're, when they're released, um, which is almost, it's almost, almost funny in a way because there's that moment where he says, they didn't tell us to not do it, you know, or, and, no, I know the, the miscalendering. So what happened no. was basically, and I'll just, first of all, just, and I'll try to do this briefly, but the whole aspect of artificial intelligence and the way that these papers are discovered was in itself fascinating, right? That, that used to be teams of lawyers sitting with bankers boxes at tables and thousands and thousands and thousands of documents. Now it's millions of documents and nobody could have gone through that. So the role of the computers and artificial intelligence in actually finding the incriminating documents, that in itself is fascinating. Um, 
But beyond that, the way that they were released, so during discovery, there is this thing. I mean, they, they were going to be made public at the trial, right. but there was at that time, the, the EU was, was voting again on whether to use glyphosate or whether to approve glyphosate for use in, in agriculture and in industrial applications, et cetera. And some of the lawyers really thought that they need to be brought out. But it, it is this thing where you challenge them and say, we have to, you know, you've got, I think it's 15 days to come back and we'll have a meet and confer and we'll make a determination about this. And they just said, we're not gonna meet and confer, you know, basically buzz off. And, and then there was a 30 day window after that, that automatically those papers became um, unsealed, right? If, if they did not challenge it. And I think that, I don't know whether somebody didn't know the law or whether it was a mistake or whatever happened, but it was pretty dramatic when, when that happened. And the, the, the story that even Neil Young was being surveilled because of his, his, his record, the Monsanto years was just like, wow. I mean, these people have a lot of money you know, to, to do that kind of thing. It, it's, un, it's unbelievable the amount of power that is shown here. Um, but like you said, it, it, it like the David and Goliath story, it sounds like a cliche, but it's very true here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what, what about it, about the, the document releasing made it so monumental? What was the, the big earth game earth shaking moment or earth shaking effects, I should say? I think there were, I think that those Monsanto papers are really the main reason that Lee and the other two cases that came after him that were tried and won, won, their, won the trials because yeah. it showed such disregard for, you know, truth, proper um, procedure in these, in these forms. Like the fact that they, there are literal emails saying, Oh, we'll we'll ghostwrite these sections, and and these independent scientists will just sign it and put their names to it. Like literally, it's in emails saying that they are going to ghostwrite independent scientific papers. That they they cannot say that glyphosate or Roundup is not carcinogenic because they haven't done the proper carcinogenicity studies. And they fought doing those studies for many years. They constantly fought whenever the EPA or somebody else tried to you know, run, in, run in a study on glyphosate, they tried to shut it down. And when IARC did their study, and here's the, the unbelievable irony that while Lee, when he first started to get a rash, was calling the call center at Monsanto to say, you know, I had this exposure and, you know, it doesn't say that there's any, that this should happen, but do you think it could be related to that? And nobody called him back. And it was right in the middle of when they were preparing to fight against the art ruling, even before the art ruling came out. They had a whole mobilized campaign to discredit the International Association for Research on Cancer. And you think, wow, and, and their budget for that year was $17 million. Like, to, I mean, you're right. Like, who, who can fight against that? And that's, that's one of the good things about mass torts is that the, the the no single person could ever bring a company like that to to justice like the the lawyers that got together we know them now we didn't know them before um they spent millions of dollars and years of of their time to on spec take these cases on right and so if you can't do that that's mike miller who is one of our main lawyers rest in peace he died unexpectedly last year which was just terrible, but he said it's the working person's key to the courthouse. And that's, but money damages are not enough. Like, you know, if I hurt my neighbor, I'm going to jail. So why aren't there criminal damages for corporations like this? I don't understand. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time. I just, there was one aspect of the film I wanted to ask about quickly. Um, one of the things I, I thought was really intriguing about the film is when you step away from the trial a little bit, it shows the connectedness and sort of the relationship between uh, the First Nations people, the Indigenous people, and, and the crops. And, and there's just sort of this relationship that, that comes up. It's not just about 
uh, Lee's journey or the, or the victims, there's something greater. I was wondering why that was so important for you to include. Well, I, I really feel that unless we step back and understand systemic repercussions, um, then, then we're just looking, it's a tunnel, right? It's, it, this is a story of harm. Um, it's a story of injustice and that in itself is enough. But when I learned how much glyphosate is used around the world um, and everywhere and in every application that, that it is used, you know, not just in farming, but on in parks, in cemeteries, in graveyards, in golf courses, beside highways, on hydro lines, rail lines, school grounds, like baseball diamonds, like it's, it's, it's mind boggling how much it is used. So we had to find some way of letting people know, like the fort, I mean, Ray, Ray Owl, the forest, like, did you know that the forest was sprayed so that the, the broadleaf species don't, you know, hog the light and kill the little spruce and pine saplings? I didn't, but just think about everything else that dies when, when that spray happens. And so it was really important to toggle out to the big picture to say, not only let's all recognize how much this is used, but, but also what are the long-term repercussions for the microbiota in the soil, in the guts of insects and people and animals and um, that, the, the, you know, and, and, and the way that plants work, uh, what is it doing to us? And when you look at Krefeld Anthropological Society and there, they've done incredibly stellar research. They're, they're cited everywhere. Um, and their study showed a 75% decline over three decades of insect life. Now, we need insects to live. <laughs> like we need pollinators, et cetera. So I felt like it was really important to have a back and forth between the incredible story of Lee and the bigger picture. Well, I, it, it works so well and ties everything together. And honestly, I'm so grateful for the chance to chat with Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. I wish you the best with the with the film and your ne whatever your next project is because I'm really looking forward to the next one too. So, take care. Thank you so much. That okay. was great. Bye bye.